Um, hello, my name is Donald Finnegan. I come from University College Dublin and I major in Chemical and Bioprocess Engineering. Um, I've come here this summer to take part in a research experience for undergraduates program under the Renewable Energies Material Research and Science and Engineering Centre in the Colorado School of Mines. Um, what I'll be researching this summer is the synthesis of nanoporous membranes for uh, hydrogen separation and purification purposes. So just to give you an idea um, of what we'll be doing here, this is essentially the membrane that we'll be creating. So several different gases will be passing on this side and hopefully only hydrogen will be able to pass through the membrane on this side. Um, regarding, we'll be using a ceramic tube, something similar to this here. And we'll be applying a membrane on this tube that will hopefully separate uh, hydrogen from other gases. So currently on this tube, viscous flow occurs. So if a gas passes into the tube, all the gases can escape through different cracks and pores um, on the tube wall. But we're going to apply a membrane. So we're going to apply a molybdenum carbide membrane, which is this one. And hopefully surface diffusion will occur rather than viscous flow. Um, the molybdenum carbide will essentially just attach the hydrogen. The hydrogen will then split up into two separate hydrogen molecules. will diffuse through, um, as you can see here, through the membrane. And then we'll come, to, uh, we'll come to the pores of the tube and then be separated into pure hydrogen and other gases will be taken out. Um, so the first the first process we'll be going through will be applying a molybdenum oxide film and then that will be carburized to, to change it to a molybdenum carbide film, which is this one. Uh, pore repair will then be taken into account. This is just pumping silicon tetrachloride uh, through the inside of the tube and oxygen will be going through the outside. So this is just, these are the pores within the, within the walls of the ceramic tube and silicon chloride will diffuse out from the inside and oxygen will diffuse in from the outside. Both of them will meet somewhere in between. Uh, silicon chloride will oxidize into silicon dioxide, forming these deposits which narrow the pore size of the, of the tube. Uh, this is just a graph of just before and after uh, the deposition. So you can see that the pore size has decreased uh, from black to the white box here for each, for each instance. Currently about 50 million tons of hydrogen is produced a year. Um, most of it is, is formed during steam reforming, which is when you react uh, methane with steam at about 800 degrees Celsius. The off gas of this process is hydrogen and carbon dioxide. So essentially we're looking for a way to separate the hydrogen from the carbon dioxide and then the hydrogen can be used in practical applications and the carbon dioxide can be sequestered as, as desired. So this would be the apparatus we're using. Uh, this is a plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition reactor. And we're just going to install this tube um, here. And then the first process will involve the silicon tetrachloride coming in from this end. Uh, it will be passing inside the tube. The pressure will build up within the tube, uh, pushing the silicon tetrachloride out through the pores in the wall. And oxygen will be coming in through here. And oxygen will be diffusing in from the other side of the tube. And as I, as I explained, um, they'll meet somewhere in between and just narrow the pore size within the, within the tubing. Um, to apply the second membrane on the outside, which is the one that attaches to the hydrogen molecules and brings, it, brings the hydrogen down towards the actual tube wall, we will be pumping either molybdenum hexafluoride, which is this container over here, or molybdenum hexacarbonyl, which is just this uh, bubbler down here. Um, how this works is that Either the molybdenum hexafluoride or the molybdenum hexacarbonyl will react with oxygen, it will oxidize and turn into molybdenum oxide and form a deposit um, on the tube wall here. 
This process occurs through uh, plasma-enhanced chemical vapour deposition. Now, we recently tried to change uh, molybdenum hexafluoride, this canister, because it's, it's environmentally damaging it's, and it's very, very expensive, into a new gas, uh, molybdenum hexacarboinyl. So instead of producing an off gas of hexa or hydrogen fluoride or just fluorine free radicals, which are very damaging to the environment, uh, with molybdenum hexacarboinyl, we'll, we'll be producing either carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. And it's also a lot, a lot cheaper than molybdenum uh, hexafluoride. So that's that process, and we can determine the thickness of the deposit by these silicon samples. Uh, we, after the deposition, there'll be a membrane or a film formed on these samples. We'll take these uh, and perform elipsometry on them to determine the thickness that has been the thickness of the film that has been applied to it, and roughly um, the thickness of the film that applies to the ceramic tube is roughly about three times as thick as the uh, silicon samples. So that's, in that way we can estimate just how thick the film is on the tube. Um, so this lid is just placed on like this. Um, oxygen is pumped through the bottom. This, is a, this chamber is uh, evacuated using this pump. Oxygen is pumped through the bottom. Either molybdenum hexafluoride or molybdenum hexacarboinyl is pumped through the side. And setting the plasma to about 200 watts, we can begin the reaction of the deposit, which normally takes about one hour to 90 minutes. So after the plasma reaction, we'll end up with the tube looking something like this, except without these two white lines, the last reaction, or this, this tube was faulty and the last reaction resulted in these. So it'll just be a dense green film, a dark green film on the tube. This is just, this dark green is uh, molybdenum oxide, but this isn't, the, this isn't the film that we actually want. The film we want will look something like this, and that is uh, molybdenum carbide, and that's the film that, uh, that, that latches on to the hydrogen and, and diffuses it down towards the ceramic uh, wall. And how we change it from molybdenum oxide to molybdenum carbide is we uh, use this piece of apparatus here, which is a carburizer, and we take this sample, uh, place it inside this, inside here. We heat it up to about 700 degrees Celsius and react this with um, methane, so CH4. And the methane will react with the oxygen and the molybdenum oxide. It, the oxygen will be replaced, it's a reduction reaction, the oxygen will be replaced with the carbon forming molybdenum carbide. And that's just the carburization process. So this is just the molybdenum carbide on the, on the ceramic tube. And the tube is now complete and ready for testing for hydrogen permeance. The permeance testing involves just pumping um, hydrogen and nitrogen and other gases on the outside at high pressure and then within the tube it will be a low pressure. So ideally the hydrogen will diffuse through the walls with no other gas and then the flow rate within the tube, uh, which will be at a lower pressure because the, the pressure difference is the driving force for the hydrogen diffusion through the wall, the flow rate will be measured and that will determine how successful their permeance was. The research experience program for the undergraduates is a fantastic opportunity. I mean in mines itself beautiful atmosphere, uh, everybody is very, very helpful. Academics is just really, like creativity and development is just really enthusiastic here. And people just, people get on well together, it's very productive. And I've learned a lot by just coming here. I mean, it gives you a lot of independence, um, a lot of responsibility. I mean, I'm operating this essentially on my own. And it just gives you very good insights into practical applications of different courses that you're doing. Like for me, chemical engineering, it's very, you know, I can apply it a lot to this because a lot of the things I'm learning in the class, um, I can just give like a practical application um, to what I've been learning and it just, it, it kind of further deepens my knowledge of just uh, different aspects of science and research. Um, Mines itself is a beautiful campus. It's surrounded by mountains. Um, it's pretty much a haven for the adventurers. 
and I've been I've really enjoyed my experience here. Yeah.